Well, we are back on another episode today, and today we are here with Jay Hernandez, who uh, who is a veteran himself, um, is actually in the journalism, and he's still in it, right? Um, yes, sir. You are, if he's got a magazine, which we want to talk about. Um, Jay, thanks, thanks so much for being on today and sharing some time with us to kind of explain a little bit about what you do and your magazine and your services. So welcome to the show, man. Mike, thank you so much for having me today. Yeah, of course. Uh, so yeah, let's just get into it, man. Just give a little bit of backstory about your service. Like, why did you get it? What did you do? What did you do in the service? And share a little bit about that. Sure. So uh, my role when I was in the Air Force was a journalist. Uh, I, I worked for American Forces Network uh, and public affairs uh, offices. So I got to travel around the world and really tell the military story, uh, which was, you know, I'm going to be biased here, but I think it's the, the best job in the military because you get to see and do so much on what other people are doing. And it gave me a skill set that, that uh, I really appreciated because I was then able to take that uh, skill set of being able to capture other people's stories and tell that. Uh, and I'm trying to continue doing that today with Veteran CEO Magazine. Nice. That's, uh, that, that's actually pretty interesting because I actually never knew anybody that was on or like a journalist or anything that did i always you know when you deploy you always see it on those stations over there afn and all these other things like oh that's kind of cool you know whatever but like i actually never met anybody that actually did all that stuff and you know so it's actually pretty cool um i never really wanted to get into journalism but i've been doing a lot more content writing and copywriting and things like that and i actually i actually kind of enjoy it you know mm -hmm. hence hence this own newsletter and this 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 podcast but um so how long did you serve and did you actually intend on staying in or was this something that you knew you just want to use as kind of like a stepping stone? That's a good question. Yeah, because so much about uh, what I do with uh, VCEO is actually about transition, uh, transitioning out of the military. So I knew when I went in that I wanted to be a journalist. Uh, I knew that um, I heard about this career field and, and truth be told uh, that what attracted it uh, me so much to it is they said, oh, you want to be a radio DJ. And I thought yeah, that sounded yeah. like the coolest job in the world. Uh, so uh, when I went to the recruiter, they said, nobody gets into, a into AFN. It's such a small career field. But, but I insisted uh, and I, I did pass the, the initial tests to, to do it. So um, I was so excited when, it, when I got into it. And the very first base they sent me to was Grand Forks, North Dakota. Uh, uh -huh. Did not do any AFN uh, radio uh, up there. Uh, but uh, shortly after uh, that, after I did my first term airman's uh, um, time there, uh, I got picked up for AFN duty out of uh, um, Yokota Air Base in Tokyo. Nice. So then I got to do uh, a lot more of the, um, the radio part uh, as yeah. well. So, so my career, uh, you know, while I was doing it w was always a question of, how long did I plan on doing it? Because I loved the, the job. I loved being able to go out into the field, capture stories, tell stories. Um, being a radio DJ for for Tokyo at 21 is just an awesome feeling. It's really humbling to have that much uh, responsibility with, with uh, that many listeners. Um, yeah. And uh, j just knowing that level of influence that, that we'd have as such a young person is a big responsibility. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then when, when my time at Yakota was coming to an end, uh, I actually was very fortunate. I got picked up for instructor duty uh, back at the Defense Information School. So I got to then go and take the lessons I had learned uh, in that time uh, and teach the next generation of journalists coming in, nice. which was all really relevant uh, at that time. Uh, yeah. It was around the time I was finishing up there. Um, for, for family reasons, I knew I, I did want to get out. Uh, we, we did stay uh, in the area for for a bit, but I was able to, you know, thankfully, uh, again, have that developed skill set from from years of working to then transition into my civilian life. Nice. So you made the transition, which obviously has done, which is exactly what you needed to do what you're doing now. Uh, you talk about a little bit about that transition and what you're actually doing now. Yeah, so so when I first got out, and I'll phrase it like this: when when I got out of the military, I think that I had two transitions. Uh, and what I mean by that is, my first transition was straight into a. Um, uh, I had 
two job offers to do what I was doing as a GS employee or to do it as a contract employee, basically doing the exact same thing I was already doing. And that was the easy transition because I was well networked. I was already doing the job. There was no better applicant than me, honestly, uh, in that because I was I was already doing the job that they had uh, listed for. Um, what happened it was a couple years later, uh, my wife and I decided to to make the move to uh, um, from Maryland to Texas, and that was my second transition because then I didn't have that same network. I didn't have the, this group of people who already knew um, knew me personally, knew me professionally, um, and it made it much more difficult to to find work in a career field that again I came into with with more than a decade's experience at this point was difficult to translate with some people. So, so there were some challenges doing that. Uh, and uh, there, there were some positions that I, I just found trying to, to really showcase the, that skill set that I had had, uh, that I had built up over years, uh, took a lot of work for me to figure out how to translate that correctly. Uh, I was able to find that job eventually but uh, it, it took a lot more work and there were periods where I wasn't sure it was going to work out, but eventually it did. I, I, I continue to do um, work in the PR realm now. Uh, and then also on top of that, I started Veteran CEO Magazine to then be able to tell stories of people transitioning and to help them through that process. Gotcha. That's awesome, man. Um, so Veteran CEO Magazine, what, what exactly is that, I mean, obviously we've, we've spoken before, I know what it is, but mm -hmm. anybody listening, what exactly is Veteran CEO Magazine? What, what does it do for the veterans? Um, and then if you can elaborate a little bit on like what people, like what kind of services, I guess, if that makes sense. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, uh, veterans talking about career transition, there, there's a lot of veterans who actually do this. Uh, and it's a great uh, indicator that it is such an important thing such a big thing that so many of us go through. Um, and I um, really am, where I decided to, I wanted to go with it is Veteran CEO Magazine. I wanted to focus on the executive viewpoint. I, I wanted to take mm -hmm. the people who transitioned uh, into senior business leadership roles because I wanted to pick their brains. I wanted to say, how did you do this? How, how did yeah. you transition from the military to these top leadership positions, is it different than what we did? You know, that there's resources that we're told to use. Did they use them? Uh, and it, it's been really interesting as I talk with people because uh, it, it's a mix of yes, but also, uh, and there's just years of preparation and work that takes place before that. Gotcha. Now, is this a uh, is this digital print? Is this a quarterly, monthly thing? How like how do people expect to get this? Yeah, so right right now it's um, vceomagazine.com uh, is the website. Uh, it's multimedia over lots of things. Gotcha. So there, there's a YouTube channel where you can watch the video for the full interviews. Uh, things are broken down into shorts uh, as well. There's a podcast for it, but then the website also has a um, a print element where there's a short story written up for each interview subject and what they did. Uh, and it also, uh, the, the website, what I like on that is it also points to uh, a lot of these organizations and what they, uh, the, the people I talk to, what resources did they use? Well, I add links for that as well. So if there's people who are interested nice. in some of those links, they can check those out while they're on the website. Okay, great. Um, are you taking sponsors or advertising or anything like that? That's the big goal. So, so there, there is general advertising that, that takes place through there using um, uh, uh, AdSense with, with the website. Um, the, the idea of being able to do full sponsors on there, that is a goal. Um, as VCEO grows, the big thing is to be able to then show, look at um, all of the people who are coming through this and using the website as a resource uh, and then can use that to, to talk with companies. Uh, to gotcha. then get full sponsorships. Nice. Okay. And if anybody wanted to maybe be a guest on your show, be featured in the magazine, or if they want to reach out to you for sponsorships, like what's the best way to to get a hold of you or to do that? Yeah. So there's a couple ways you, you can do it. You can uh, um, through the website uh, vclmagazine.com. There's the contact us 
link, that's going to shoot an email directly to me, which is vceo at vceomagazine.com. So you could also just skip a step if you wanted to shoot me an email directly. But I also encourage people, uh, I'm on LinkedIn um, a lot. Uh, Jay Hern or Jonathan Hernandez um, on LinkedIn, um, VCEO has its LinkedIn page. That's an area where people can reach out to me. I, f I find a lot of interaction, a lot of the, the reach that I do with people professionally mm -hmm. takes place on that platform. Okay, gotcha. Now there's, I, I think I want to throw you a little curveball here, um, just for anybody for listening. Um, you made the transition and technically like this is a business, right? You're doing a magazine and creating mm -hmm. all this stuff. This is a business, right? With, which I think a lot of veterans aspire to do. And once we start getting into it, even with myself, you know, when I left and then I went into law enforcement, I figured out, okay, I want to do business and all this. We found out that it's not that easy. It's very difficult. Um, and unfortunately, what is it? The percentages is like 95% of most businesses will never see their 10th anniversary, unfortunately. Um, for veterans or anybody actually listening to this, what would be one piece of advice that you would give to anybody wanting to start a business? especially in the journalism space. Maybe they want to write their own publication, become a content creator, something like that. What that, you got? That's a, that's a really good <laughs> question uh, and, and a lot to dissect uh, from there. So, so if I really yeah. had to choose one piece of advice, um, it's uh, pick the, the step that you know is in the right direction, even if it's a small step, and do that one uh, and use mm -hmm. that momentum to move uh, forward, like never underestimate the the power of momentum once you get going. Um, it's w w when you're starting from a standstill, that's when stuff is the most daunting. That's when all the questions come in. That's when all the doubt comes up. You look at the big picture and how am I going to go through all of this? Um, picking that first small step and knocking that out. Maybe it's just, you know, I need to make a contact today. Uh, maybe it's a, okay, what, what do I need to, you know, get registered as a business? What's one step in there that I need to do today? Accomplishing that one step will do two things. It'll help give you uh, a visual on what the next step is. Uh, and you'll also discover that this has been probably the biggest truth of when I've, uh, as I'm going through uh, th this whole process is if I had a, a list of 10 steps that I had to do, as soon as I started step one, there was a subset of steps mm -hmm. within there. So all of a sudden, cool. step one became 10 steps and a subset in there had its own 10 steps. So 10 steps becomes 100 steps really quickly. Yeah. But I knew it was in the right direction. And as long as I took that step in that right direction, that's what keeps me moving. Uh, and now I look back a year at how many how many steps I've knocked out over this, which yeah. some I didn't even know were, were things I needed to do. But it's it's been moving in that direction, and and hopefully ten years from now we'll have another conversation and we'll still be rolling. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Now that's a really solid piece of advice. You know, I think I mean you're right. There is a lot to unpack with that question, <laughs> um, and I kind of threw that at you. But I, you answer, you gave some really solid advice um, because I think anybody that's been down this journey before. And it has to speak to the same thing. You know, in the beginning, it's very difficult, especially when you're limited on funds. You're trying to bootstrap something, which I've done many, many times. And for me, like I had so many different ideas that I want to do. Like I have an interest in almost everything. Like it's crazy. And I want to start so many different things. Um, and so I would do like a lot of people did. I would start it and I would do a few things and I wouldn't get any traction. I'd get discouraged and then I'd try my next idea. And I did this over and over and over again. And ultimately what ended up happening was I lost so much time, energy, effort, and then probably the most important thing is money. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But you're you're right. Once you pick something that you're really passionate about or that you really enjoy doing, and you start doing it, do it. Give yourself ninety days, right? Hit it hard, and then when you start to see that momentum, then I think you start to see like, okay, this is happening. Things are starting to, you know, take off, and you're starting to see the fruits of your labor, so to speak. So. Yeah, that was my biggest thing, man. And it was probably something that I probably should have listened to myself on that advice. So, you know, what Jay just said, like, literally take that to heart. Um, find something and stick with it for give yourself 90 days because it's going to be tough in the beginning. It's going to be very tough. And I know a lot of veterans that have start, tried to start a business and they did OK. And they even lasted a couple of years. And unfortunately, their businesses didn't make it, you know, but, you know, that's a whole that's a whole nother rabbit store, a whole nother rabbit hole to go down. but 
Yeah, mm-hmm. no, I appreciate that, man. That's a really solid piece of advice. Um, we'll have your information posted up on here so people can get out, get, get a hold of you and reach out to you. Um, any any last words, any thoughts of encouragement or anything? Yeah, you know, the, the, there's one more thing I, I, I was thinking just as we're talking. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, so if I can give a second piece, uh, I'll, I'll yeah, yeah, take advantage sure. of, of this time. Um, never underestimate how much people want to help the veteran community. That that mm-hmm. has been so eye-opening for me uh, as I've gone through this and, and I'm reaching out to people. Um, there is a lot of rejection with it. I, I won't lie. Yeah. There's uh, for, for every, um, you know, the thing I send out there that there's probably um, nine no responses to the one just response I get. And then, yeah. you know, mo- moving forward on there. But the folks who uh, really want to help out with veterans, they're really passionate about it. Uh, there's yeah. a passionate group of people here that want to help veterans with starting a business and entrepreneurship, um, just life transition into uh, civilian careers, professional careers that to, to be highly successful. There's a lot of people who want to help do that. Uh, so whether you're a veteran trying to start their own business or just transition into the military, there's a lot of people ready and willing to help. There's a lot of resources that that are available that I didn't even know about that, that um, you know, I, I use the um, uh, SBDC of North Texas to help mm-hmm. me out. I use the Texas Veterans Commission uh, to help me out. There, there, there's all these organizations that are built up uh, to help veterans uh, be successful uh, no matter what they're, they're trying to do d- during that transition time. So never underestimate just how much people are willing to, to support veterans. Yeah, 100%. Um, and, and not to, to drag this on uh, much longer, but you're right. And, and that's something that I didn't think about when I was first starting my own business is I didn't I didn't actually go out there and look at all the resources that were available to me. There are thousands of resources available, which, you know, you could search the end of the internet if you want to try to find all these resources, but they're out there and they do want to help you. And that's why I decided to start, you know, my own publication, the newsletter and the podcast and everything, because I want to find these resources and I want to make them known and deliver them to the people such as, you know, you and me and everybody else that are in the veteran military community um, that they're out there. You just got to look around for a little bit. You know, I just found some recently the last couple of weeks that are really great and they're for vacations, you know, but, uh, you know, anyway, so I just, I just want to reemphasize that and, and say, yeah, you're hundred percent right, man. There's so many resources out there. You just, you just got to look, just take a little bit of time, energy and effort to do your research and you'll find it. So. Yes, sir. And All I, right, man. I, Why, uh, I plug a lot of those on VCEO magazine too. So, uh, okay. if, if so you definitely visit the go website, check that out. I got a lot of resources on, on that website for people to check out. Perfect. Yep. So visit the website, go check that out and uh, see what kind of resources are out there available to you. Um, Jay, thank you so much for hopping on today and sharing a little bit of your story, your journey and and how people can reach out to you and the services that you're providing to the military and veteran community, man. Thank you so much. Hey, Mike, thank you so much. And thank you for what you're doing as well. All right, man. Take it easy.